down in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Been real bad. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you some of the areas that I looked at at the Equip Expo 2022. I'm going to do this differently than the other videos that you've seen. Uh, instead of just showing you a bunch of highlights, I'm going to let you walk through the show the way and look at it the way I saw it. And uh, some of the areas I'll just let run as uh, my video recorder was, was working. Uh, other areas I'll comment on. I'll talk about some of the vendors and some of the new stuff that was there. Um, and some of the stuff that I liked and some of the stuff that I didn't like. When I started going to the show back in the late 90s, it was called GIE. Later they changed the name to GIE Expo. And this year they changed the name again to Equip Expo. When I first started, there was probably 200 vendors, about five acres of outdoor stuff, and probably about 5,000 people showed up. This year was a record number. There was over 1,000 exhibitors, 30 acres of outdoor exhibits, and over 25,000 people attended. Uh, it's touted as the sixth largest show of this kind uh, in the nation so it was interesting the first few years when it started uh, the brands brought everything with them the residential and the commercial stuff uh, today not there's very little residential I'll point it out as we go along but uh, it's really turned into a commercial operator uh, commercial landscapers uh, show. Everything here is the newest and the latest and the greatest. Of course, just like uh, automobiles, uh, they're trying to move to electric as fast as they can. So everybody was showcasing their electric zero turns, their electric stand-ons, their electric skid steers, and so on and so forth. Uh, the technology is progressing pretty good. Uh, Aaron's Toro, uh, Greenworks Pro, um, and, a, and quite a few others have now got products that are ready to go on, have been out on the market for a year or two or ready to go. Um, if you're really interested in all that stuff, uh, let me know and we can, we can talk some more about it. But uh, for a typical homeowner, um, all this commercial stuff in electric, you're looking thousands of dollars to, uh, to own it. I will show you the uh, residential electrics that did, that did come to the show. So I'll let this run a little bit and talk about some of these uh, different products and then just let it run and let you see what I saw. Enjoy.
This mower coming up here is from a company called Stryker. It's a fully autonomous electric mower, uh, so you can let it go and, and uh, mow all your property, or you can use it as a stand-on if you want to trim or trim something else that's not mapped out to mow. So, kind of interesting. You may or may not have heard Honda's getting out of the uh, lawn mowing business. Uh, mowers, that type of stuff is all disappearing. Cub Cadet only brought their big commercial stuff this year to the show. Usually they have almost everything except the lawn tractors, but uh, this year they just brought the big stuff. So I think they wanted to let DeWalt have the show this year. Milwaukee is really expanding into landscaping. They, these saws here are really powerful. I'm really impressed with them. They have a new one-handed uh, trim saw. They have a power brush for the string trimmers and a paddle for the string trimmers. Paddle brush type deal. Um, a lot of expansion here. Uh, I have the equipment, I like it quite a bit. This is the first time that Milwaukee and Ryobi have been at the show. Ryobi bought, brought their new uh, lithium ion zero turn. Uh, it's a 80 volt model and it has battery packs that you can interchange, you can move in and out of it. Uh, for example, there, there, there's it hold the 52 inch uses three. Uh, I think the 42 inches uses two, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, I like the machine. I like the looks of the machine. It sets up nice and high, and uh, there's plenty of room on it. Uh, even I can get on and off of it pretty easily. Uh, it's electric. It's quiet. It has a new joystick instead of lap bars. And I really, really like the joystick. Uh, it's really easy to use. It's really easy to control. Uh, I, you can see me playing with it here. Uh, it zero turns really nice. Uh, I really... They got it right. Uh, one thing about joysticks is some companies have tried to use them in the past, um, but at high speeds, and this has been a problem with all the electric residential, at high speeds they become really hard to control. You just move the lever just a tiny bit, you know, your mower is all over the place. But uh, Ryobi has got this one figured out. Um, the faster you go, the less travel is on the joystick. So you'll be able to run at full speed and be able to control this, draw, run a straight line without any problems at all. Um, of the residential electrics, uh, this definitely was my favorite here for the year. And I'll show you a couple others as time goes on. About time. You look like a natural out there, man. I, I drove a country clipper before. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, similar. So, first thing I had to fi find out is if you put a gate in this, so right. if you're running really fast, it won't right. move far, quite as far. Right, right, right. The minor adjustments, yeah. 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 If, you, if you had the full swing right. at high speed, you'd tip them over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Their bagger is a powered bagger that and what's kind of unique about it there is it uh, pulls more air the blower pulls air in and helps blow the stuff up into the chute it doesn't run all the debris through the blower so it uh, uses a lot less power I'm sure and I think that's going to work pretty good. I can't wait to try that one. Yeah, I couldn't quite figure out how to open the bag up. But 
It's hard to do with one hand. DAR Power introduced this electric power system uh, about a year ago. You know, they have a zero turn now that uses three of the batteries. They got a brush cutter that uses the batteries and a brush mower. Um, <clears throat> I, you may have heard and may have not heard, uh, DR Power and Generac, who owns them, have gotten back out of the snowblower business. I think they found out that we really don't want Chinese snowblowers over here. So, anyway. The biggest news of the show is steel is now into zero turn mowers and stand ons. The biggest disappointment is they're made by Briggs and Stratton, meaning they, it looks like they just picked models out of the Ferris and the Simplicity lineup and painted them orange and cream. So, uh, I guess the big thing is, is it's going to give Briggs and Stratton a boost. Maybe they'll continue making zero turns now. They've had problems in the past. The dealer networks fell apart and they just weren't as popular as what they should have been. But uh, no word on if uh, all 5,000 steel dealers are going to get these or just select uh, larger dealers are going to carry them. So. Check with your local steel dealer and find out what's going on there if you're interested. This is a new company that just jumped into the U.S. market this year. They're called Cress. Uh, they're from, um, I think, they're from Germany. Uh, they told me they have they have places all over the world now. Um, it, they wouldn't be a precise, but it also sounds like it's all made o over in China. But uh, they do have a unique feature um, with their robotics. With their robotics, you take um, the GPS off of the mower and put it on this little cart here and then you can walk around your property and set your property markers. No wires uh, or anything like that. So um, it's, would be, it's a lot faster to set up a boundary and uh, you can also uh, use it on different properties. Uh, they're showing off three different sizes. One for small lawns and uh, a larger one up to I think two acres. That one's supposed to do two acres. The sales rep I was talking to did piss me off <coughs> and I'll let you listen in on the conversation here. How are we doing today sir? Good. Any questions on the sauce? I don't think I have any yet. Okay. So. <laughs> what do you know about Cress? Um, that you just jumped on the market here in about the last two months. Snuck up on everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and it, apparently you're not Chinese? So we're actually global. We have uh, manufacturing all over. Okay, so you do make stuff in China. We have some stuff made in China, okay. um, but we have a lot of stuff like our saws use Oregon bar and chains, and we yep. have headquarters in Canada and Charlotte. and. So the idea, Crest the brand was founded in 24, and okay. it was purchased by our parent company, Positech, uh, a few years ago. Positech, And then they've okay. been working on this new battery technology, and everything sort of fell into place in the last year, and they built the team and got everything rolled out, and we're really excited to show people what we got. Okay. So have you heard about the batteries at all? No. So we just came out with proprietary battery technology. We have a lithium ion offering too, just like your other cordless options. Those are more for like the homeowners, you know? Okay. Our commercial line runs our brand new batteries, which our biggest 11 amp hour backpack battery, you can charge that in eight minutes. So the idea is no downtime. And then on top of that, our cycles. With a lithium ion battery, you're looking at about 300 cycles. So charge it up, use it. 
and after 300 cycles, you're only getting up to about 80% full charge. It won't go okay. to 100 anymore. Ours will do 3,000 plus cycles before you're hitting that 80% threshold. Okay, so what type of technology are you using then? It's magic. It is magic. <laughs> Very few people even know. So, so you're not going to tell me? I can't. Listen, if I knew, I would okay. tell you. But it's it's that's the Coca-Cola secret right there. So, I just it's not lithium ion. It's all okay. I'm capable of saying at this moment. Okay. But we're really trying to make it convenient. You know, like a lot of people go, "Oh, you guys are super like environmental." Like, yeah, but that's sort of a symptom. It's not, you know, the goal. The goal is convenience. So we have. The, uh, so you heard me say okay, and I was mad. First off. He tried telling me that lithium ion only has about 300 life cycles to it, and then it won't charge to full capacity. Well, that was the old NICATs that we got rid of years ago. Lithium batteries will last 1,000 to 1,500 cycles without having any issues with them at all. Secondly, he played the secret squirrel shit on me and said, oh, it's magic, I can't tell you what it is. Well, every, a lot of other places are now coming out with these fast charge batteries. They'll charge in 10 minutes or 15 minutes and stuff like that. And they're all willing to tell me what the tech is. This, this company at this point in time, I have no interest in them. So beware with this crust stuff, let's see. Let somebody else buy it first and see if it's any good. Good. Well, I just realized this is Parker Hannafin. Yes, sir. And you don't have anything, any fluids running through it, so how does it work for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> so, what you may not know about Parker Hannafin is. It's a very large company that sells lots of different things. I know. I, know. <laughs> so yeah, I had to are, give them some grief because like Parker Hannafin is you know, known for their fluid, uh, hydraulic, pneumatic type equipment. I've been working with them since the 1970s. In fact, the owner used to come to my training classes and when I taught nuclear power stuff and uh, would train my workers on how to use their products. as well. That's fast. Yeah. Nice and fast. Greenworks Pro is all electric. Uh, this is their fourth or fifth year at the show now, and uh, they've got the machines figured out. Um, they drive just as well as the gas powered gas powered ones and they're much quieter. Um, they have both uh, commercial and residential models. Uh, the residential models are exclusively sold at uh, Tractor Supply Company. Um, they didn't have any of the residentials out here for me to test. I think I'll show them to you later on here in this video. So, but. Uh, if you're looking at uh, <clears throat> something other than an Aarons or a Toro, uh, this is a good company to look at. They have a power unit 
that you can charge out in the field with and uh, just a, a good well-rounded line of equipment if you if you're working if you're a commercial guy and working in those areas that have to be all electric or if you just want to go all electric yourself uh, um, this is a good company to look at at this time Their chainsaws are really powerful. This guy is blind cutting a log where he just sticks the nose in and goes straight into the log. No power drag at all. Here are the steel residential models. Uh, they look like they're based off of the Simplistic Courier. Uh, that one's kind of interesting because it doesn't have any front suspension on it. Uh, Simplicity doesn't have a model anymore that without the suspension, so that must be that older Courier model. But uh, they are playing with them. Uh, both is pretty busy. That's the old tried and true classic. That's what we built the company on. And the Eagle and the Eagle HB are the, yep. like the new generation. So they got a lower center of gravity, two hills a little better. Luckily I didn't own one myself, but one of the guys that uh, mowed in my area had to uh, one of the ones with the two engines on it. Wow. Sell most of them down south yet? <laughs> oh, all right, that's yeah. what I wanted to see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's making that look fun. Yes. <laughs> I think so. didn't spend a lot of time in the echo booth but uh, I did watch a chainsaw and it, it did not have near the power of some of the other electrics that I was watching so that's kind of interesting. As usual, the Xmark booth was really busy. Toro, uh, Gravely, Skag, those were definitely the busiest booths. Um, you can tell by how popular the equipment is, by how many people are standing in line waiting to use it. This was uh, about 
20 minutes after the show opened, so even then. This is the uh, Country Clipper. They have the unique flip-up deck on them, so, and you can do it, buy it either mechanically or they have an electric assist so that you can work on your machine very easily. Um, Country Clipper, as you know, has been around a long time. Um, I do like their joystick machines. Good. Um, haven't owned one for 20 years, but uh, yeah, they, it's a good heavy duty machine. Uh, they primarily market to residential and farmers and stuff like that, but uh, their top three machines are commercial rated. So if you have a country clipper dealer around, take a look at them. background back there you see the Coyote booth uh, they started out as small tractors uh, they now are into commercial zero turns and stand on so uh, they're expanding as you know Bobcat Industries bought Bobcat mowers from uh, Schiller a couple years ago and now they've expanded that line pretty nice Take a look at the bad boy booth here. Nobody wants to drive one. That's interesting. You know how much I like Walker mowers if you've been around the channel at all. Uh, here's a couple guys playing with the residential model that they introduced last year. Um, Walker mowers probably give you, from a residential standpoint, they probably give you the best cut of any mower on the market. Uh, they're agile, they're fast. Um, I just can't say enough about them. They are a little expensive here, seven thousand dollars plus, but uh, they will last you as long as you're in your home. I'm sure uh, they're built well. Uh, they're mainly a commercial brand but uh, the with this uh, residential mower it's pretty cool if you watch YouTube or TikTok, you probably saw the fire that uh, Dewalt had with their zero turn outside but uh, in my opinion this contraption is the real dumpster fire of the show this thing is an all-electric mower it's a sit-down or a stand-on mower. And uh, those levers up on the top there, um, you can use them to drive the machine sitting down or you drop the seat back down and you pull them back and you can use it as a stand-on. I don't know if people are going to like that. Here's Bad Boy's inside booth. Uh, they have everything that they make sitting around here, so. Greenworks Pro's inside booth. No, they look substantial, so I like that. Coming up here, past this mower here, that next mower is the residential model that they're going to be selling at Tractor Supply Company.
That's Dixie Chopper's remote control side hill mower. As you may or may not know, Toro purchased Spartan and Intimidator UTVs uh, this last year. Um, why? I don't know, but uh, a lot of you guys like the Spartan mower, so we'll see how it goes. I did spend some time talking with the guys in the booth, and they're really excited about the fact that Toro had is going to leave them alone but yeah, they're going to give so. them a lot of R&D uh, and money that they can use to expand the lineup so so I can't wait to see what Spartan's going to be coming out with next wait till this fall next fall after looking at literally a thousand other zero turns the Eagle mowers Look like little toys. They're small, low to the ground, um, a lot of plastic on them, that type of stuff. One advantage of the Ego though is that one battery fits all of your electric lawn and garden stuff. From the mowers to the to the walk behind mowers to the string trimmers to the snow blowers. Did come out come out with baggers for every model or little trays here to hold stuff in, uh, and a uh, branch catcher. Oh, I mean sun shield. So they do have an a 10 amp 10 amp hour battery now, so you can get more run time out of your zero turns. One thing that caught my eye is they now have a steering wheel model. Uh, it's pretty unique to the market. It's a fly-by-wire system like the Ryobi joystick. So it's very easy to control. This look could be the future for Ego because uh, so much easier to use than lap bars and if you can drive a car you can drive this more. Pretty cool, huh? That's too bad. I haven't had a chance to really, really look at an Ego snowblower. The front housing is metal, the auger is in metal, the transmission, transmission case, and everything else is all plastic. So, well, we'll give it, we'll find out how they're holding up here this year compared to last year. They're not quite as much capacity as the Toro Electric, that's for sure. Is that aluminum or plastic? That's aluminum. Okay. Two stage, this is what I use at my house. I live in Pennsylvania. 
Um, on one charge, I can do my neighbor's two 10 car driveway, my 10 car driveway, and our walkway. The heavy slushy stuff, the heavy stuff, I can do my, my 10 car driveway and my walkway and part of theirs, and then take the batteries out and replace them with new batteries. 10 amp hour? Uh, 7.5. 7.5, yeah, so okay. 10, you're going to get a longer run time. Okay. Congratulations to Harry Phillips of Yellow Lawn Lawn Care. And it run, does it need both batteries to run it? Okay. It can run off one, and it can run off of any size battery, so you can put a, a 2.5 and a 10 in there. It's going to drain them equally, but of course the 2.5 will drain first. But it's going to take power from both of those. Okay. And that's, this is the brand new single stage. Yeah, I heard that you this put a rubber. Hand warmers on it. Okay. So you got the hand warmers. Uh, what you have is with this one, it actually, the auger helps propel it. So like our other single stage, you physically have to push it. This one, it helps propel it. Do you have to lift up to get it to work? To pull? Um, I have, it's brand new. I haven't used it okay. yet. So I can't give you my opinion on that. Yeah, you got to lift up. I'll talk about this uh, machine later when I talk about the new Toral battery single stage machine. So that's the ones I recommend. Okay, I'm going to make a couple other videos one on Toral products, one on Aaron's products, and uh, maybe two or three more. So that's it for this video. If you uh, like this video, please like it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Bye.